Welcome everybody. It's nice to be with you this morning. Thank you for spending time with us. Um, I just wanted to take a minute before we start our presentation to introduce myself. I am uh, the Dean of the College of Nursing and it's such a pleasure to be here with you. Um, this is actually my first fall here at UMass and I just wanted to let you know that I think what you will find is that the um, the programs and the research and the education in the College of Nursing is what excited me about coming here. And I hope that you'll find today as you find out more information that you feel the same way. Um, we're happy to answer your questions and we have panelists here to try to answer those specific questions for you from the college. And I will turn it over to Dr. Hogan, um, who I believe is gonna start our presentation this morning to give you more information. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the UMass Amherst College of Nursing Fall Visit Day for 2020. We know you have many questions and we hope to be able to answer as many of them as possible today. So again, we are uh, located in Skinner Hall and we offer a variety of degree programs, not just the undergraduate degrees, but we also offer a uh, master's and uh, a couple of doctoral degrees, DNP and uh, PhD in nursing. And the offices for the faculty and staff that support the College of Nursing are located here in Skinner Hall. Uh, this is also the building where most of the College of Nursing classes are scheduled, although the general education courses and other university courses tend to be scheduled in a number of different buildings across the campus. So just a little bit more about the College of Nursing itself. The College of Nursing was founded in 1953, and it is fully accredited by the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, or CCNE. Students have lots of opportunity uh, to participate in research with faculty during their time in the you know, program, and they also get full exposure to uh, a wide variety of faculty. We have over full-time 40 full-time faculty, and so students get to benefit from their clinical interests as well as their research interests during their time with us. And further information about the faculty and their research is available on the College of Nursing webpage. So the College of Nursing currently has two locations, the primary location, of course, being in Amherst, and this is the home for the four-year nursing majors. The second one is at the UMass Center in Tower Square in downtown Springfield, Massachusetts. And the Springfield Center is home to the students in the accelerated or second bachelor's track. Both the Amherst and the Springfield sites are equipped with state-of-the-art simulation laboratories. And the reason I'm mentioning the Springfield site here during this presentation is the Springfield site actually has the simulated um, home visit community apartment for students when they are doing community health nursing. Uh, students complete their clinical experiences in leading, he leading healthcare facilities in Western Massachusetts, uh, primarily up and down the Pioneer Valley in Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, and in Greenfield. But we do extend out also to, the, to Worcester County uh, to the east and to Berkshire County to the west on an as-needed basis for particular clinical courses. And students also may, during their final semester, have the opportunity to uh, do a clinical internship in Boston for their final nursing semester if they so apply and if they are actually accepted by that clinical agency. All right. So the College of Nursing Administration, you already heard from our stellar new dean, Dean Borderstrass, and I'm so delighted she's here with us today. We are thrilled that she is with us in the College of Nursing. We also have an amazing executive associate dean, uh, Dr. Cynthia Jaslon. And I am the nursing major program director and full-time faculty clinical assistant professor in the College of Nursing. And I'm thrilled to be able to share part of this Saturday morning with you. All right. All right, Our, we do have a dedicated College of Nursing advisor in the College of Nursing and his name is Reggie Lamoth. Uh, Reggie will be meeting with you during each semester. He helps you to pick out the classes that you need, uh, the general education courses, the nursing prerequisite courses, any electives you may need, and really helps keep you on track with your plan of study during your time in the nursing program. He also will help you to get your schedule or organized around any university sponsored activities, such as sports, band, ROTC, and the like, and uh, possibly other uh, commitments that you have as well in the, um, during your time in the program. All right. So the nursing major plan of study, 
uh, you you may find that you are. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I skipped a slide. Let me. Again, I'm having trouble going backward and forward on my computer. So the last person I really do need to mention is Liz Thoreau. She is the undergraduate program assistant for the four-year nursing major. She is in her 18th year in the College of Nursing and her 28th year at the university. She is a wealth of information and she is a widely tapped resource by any and all students in the College of Nursing. She, if she doesn't know the answer to a question herself, she will definitely know who can answer it and she will point you in the right direction. And many of us fond fondly have referred to her for years and years as the den mother to the, col to the College of Nursing students. All right, so on to your plan of study. You will find as a nursing major that your plan of study is a little bit more rigid than some of those, uh, some of your peers who are non-nursing uh, majors that have majors in other fields. And this is because the program is fairly lockstep. You certainly need to complete your gen ed courses along with any other student at the university. But because we have a number of nursing courses which need to be completed in a certain sequence, then you may need to complete the prerequisite courses to certain nursing courses before you can progress on in the program. Um, we do have, um, we have implemented a revised curriculum starting a couple of years ago. So now clinicals will actually begin in the spring of the sophomore year instead of the fall of the junior year. And so, and the full plan of study can actually be accessed on the College of Nursing website. The next few slides just give us a little bit of a view of what Skinner Hall is like. Again, you're in a webinar, you're from far away and really can't see what's going on uh, right in real time. And, and I actually sadly missed the opportunity like you to be able to be standing in an auditorium talking with you face to face. But this is an inside view of Skinner Hall. So the previous slide showed the, the front face of Skinner Hall and actually that's the backdrop I have behind me on my screen. But the school, the, the um, Skinner Hall is actually a squarish kind of building with an open courtyard in the middle. And we have two uh, very active floors. We also have classrooms down in the basement. So this is just a, a look from that particular view. Okay, this particular picture is one, uh, a picture of one of our classrooms. This is a tiered classroom. And so what you're looking at is the side in the back of the room and the, uh, where the podium is over to the right is down where the speakers would actually be. Okay, a few more pictures just to give you a sense of us. Uh, these shots are of the simulation lab and we have uh, parallel simulation labs, one in Put your audio cut out quickly. Marianne, we, I think we lost your audio. Along with the wall panels. And the uh, one on the, the bottom on the left is actually an exam room set up uh, like for a regular examining room. Uh, another couple of pictures of the simulation center as well. And here I think I would just like to showcase that we actually have um, uh, mannequins that aren't just adults but also pediatric and uh, pregnant women as well. All right, uh, moving on, we do have a number of nursing groups and organizations. Uh, one group um, is student ambassadors. So students may apply to become, well, uh, ambassadors for the College of Nursing, to participate in College of Nursing events, to answer questions from incoming students and other opportunities as they become available. Um, during a time of pandemic such as this, we are a little bit more limited in what we're able to do, uh, but they serve a valuable role in the, in the College of Nursing and we're really grateful for their efforts. In addition to the hundreds of uh, organizations that are available as clubs for UMass, we also have a dedicated student nursing association and our student Lizzie who's with us today is actually the uh, president of that organization this year. We also have students that are members of the Black Nurses Association, the Hispanic Nurses Association as well. The UMass Amherst campus, the College of Nursing is part of the Medical Reserve Corps and all students therefore get some training. Initially in the Medical Reserve Corps, we have a once yearly program to stay up to speed with responding to um, emergencies and certainly um, all of the College of Nursing students in their clinical nursing cor course 
work are participating in the MAPS Asymptomatic Testing Center to support the COVID testing here at UMass Amherst. And there are many, many other opportunities as well um, besides these, but these just showcase a few of them. Admissions, we don't do anything in the four-year nursing major for undergraduate admissions. We only handle admissions in the College of Nursing for the accelerated tracks and for the R and BS track and for the uh, graduate program. So anything to do with admissions goes directly to the UMass und Undergraduate Admissions Office. And finally, uh, we uh, left some time at the end for some uh, questions, but we do know that we there's some commonly asked questions. So would, I, I think I'd like to take a moment or two just to answer those right up front. So the first one that often is asked is, can I play sports, band, et cetera? And the answer is yes, we will make up every reasonable effort to accommodate any schedules that are needed for university official events when we schedule your clinical coursework. Um, although we can't guarantee the same for intramural sports or for recreational types of clubs. Uh, commonly, another common question is about nursing opportunities for studying abroad. And the sophomore fall semester is the point in your nursing plan of study where it is easiest to actually be able to study abroad. Uh, currently, we have either active or in negotiation uh, phases of planning for study abroad plans in Spain, which would have been active this, this fall, except for the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and also in the United Kingdom, which is just about set to go live. Um, in addition, we have had opportunities over many of the spring break weeks to have excursions to the uh, Dominican Republic, and of course the pandemic has interrupted that as well. Um, I think I've already talked about clinicals in the presentation, which is another frequently asked question. And then the other one that gets asked is, are there any special requirements that are needed before we begin clinical in the spring semester of the sophomore year? And the answer to that question, of course, is yes. You would need to have your own reliable transportation to and from the healthcare agencies that are used for clinical experience. This is because we are out in Amherst, which is... Uh, you know, a more, I won't say rural, but it's certainly a less populated than major cities such as Boston, Springfield, where there's ready access uh, by bus and public transportation to any number of locations. So you do need your very own reliable transportation beginning in the spring semester of the sophomore year. Um, in addition, in order to actually get into any clinical agencies, and you'll find this regardless of what program a nursing student would attend, is that clinical agencies require documentation of any number of things before students are actually allowed on site. And so starting very early in this fall semester of the sophomore year, we will be having you start to work with an online support service called Castle Branch, which will help you to gather together any and all of the documentation that you would need so that you'll be all ready to go um, in time for the, the spring of your sophomore year. So those are the most commonly asked questions that I tend to get. And I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen at this point, is that if that's okay for the whoever's moderating, is it okay if I stop sharing? Sure, that's fine. Okay, thank you. All right. So are there any questions? It looks like there's a question in the chat about double majoring in public health and nursing. All right, so we've actually never had a student who double majored in nursing and public health at the same time. I'm, I don't know that it would be impossible to do so. The difficulty when you get to the upper division in nursing, and, and I mean, when once clinicals start, is that the College of Nursing has to use block scheduling because when students go to a clinical agency, they're gone to the agency for the entire day. It's not like they go for a few hours and then come back for a class from 1 to 2.15 or something like that. So it makes it very, very difficult if students are doing clinical on Thursdays and Fridays or may have a semester when they're doing clinical on Tuesday and Friday to actually be able to have a university style schedule when you're actually in clinical courses. So the nursing coursework tends to be in what we call block classes. So you'd have a single three hour class that meets once a week for a three credit course rather than meeting two or three times a week for the same thing. So I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I think it would be logistically difficult to do.
right. Are there any other questions? I also, I saw a question that I grabbed um, about Skinner itself. Um, when was it built? I'm not sure when it was originally built, but I do know that it was redone very recently. I could, anyone could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in 2013, it was redone and it is beautiful. I love Skinner. I always study in there because it's nice and quiet and it's a good environment. And it is on our main campus. It's really in the like, hub of campus. There is a bus stop right out front and it's right across from um, the campus center and it's very close to the library. So it's really in that middle hub of campus. So yes, Lizzie, you're exactly right. Um, just to add on a detail or two about that, um, Skinner, I, again, I don't know what year it was built, but it was one, it is one of the older buildings on campus and the intent was actually to preserve the architecture. So when this building was renovated, it originally used to have like a squared off U shape and there was nothing along the back. So the entire back is new and it was designed to be very, um, uh, not only state of the art, but also to use, to be sustainable. So there were a lot of uh, recycled materials and uh, those types of things used, the flooring, the walls, use lots of uh, glass and portholes in the doors to take advantage of natural light and such. So yes, it is a, a beautiful building for sure. Okay, other There's questions? A, there's a question about where clinicals are done. Um, and I know you touched on that a little bit. Yeah, I can certainly expand on that for sure. So in, in Springfield, Massachusetts, the major medical center is Bay State Medical Center, and that's a level one trauma center. Has um, Sometimes the bed counts change, but I'll just say 600 plus beds to be on the safe side. It's also a teaching hospital. Um, so there are medical students as well as nursing students, radiology students, students from all different types of health professions are learning there. So that's one of our major sites. Another site is more close to campus uh, over in Northampton, Massachusetts, and that's Cooley Dickinson Hospital, which is a community hospital which offers its own uh, benefits for clinical experience. And that hospital is now part of the Mass General System, part of Partners, the Partners Organization. <clears throat> so we have, a, again, a number of our students' clinical experiences there. Um, a third one is at Bay State Franklin Medical Center in Greenfield, again, part of the Bay State System, and also in Wing. A wing Memorial Hospital, which is also now part of the Bay State System, and that's in Palmer, Massachusetts. So most of our clinical sites are within roughly uh, 45 to 50 minutes uh, from campus, although Greenfield, et cetera, would be like about a half hour away. If for selected experiences, people were to travel to Berkshire Medical Center in Pittsfield, the commute's uh, a little bit more like an hour, probably an hour and a quarter to give you time to park and get into the building on time for report. And from time to time, we also have students who at least have internships in the Worcester area, although we're currently investigating other opportunities there. So hopefully that helps a little bit. It looks like there's also a question about NCLEX pass rates and employment rates. And I know off the top of my head from, from Liz's great data that the pass rate um, for our graduates even this past year was very high, I believe 97 or 98%. I can't speak directly to the employment rate because it re uh, we rely on students to report where they're working, so. Right, so I think again, uh, kudos to Liz's amazing record keeping because she is able to keep in touch with students in all kinds of ways. And so reported to date, just for the class that graduated this past May, we're already at a 50% self-reported employment rate. So it's, it may be very well higher than that, but we, again, we only know the data that's reported. And yes, our pass rate was 97% most recent for this most recent graduating class. And we tend to average somewhere in the 93 to 97 range on average. I also just wanted to grab the question about the nursing wraps and just connecting as a um, class, I'd say yes, there is a nursing wrap. I was actually in it my freshman year. In recent years, it's been on the 21st floor of Kennedy Tower in Southwest, so some good views up there. Um, and I loved being in the wrap. Our, our RA was also an upperclassman in the nursing program, so she was amazing. She um, gave us all of the tips about how to study, what classes you know, are more challenging than others, and it was a great way to get to know one another. Um, there was about 30 to 35 of us in the wrap, and it was just another great way to get to know each other. 
of course it's not mandatory. And I also want to stress if you're not in the wrap, you're not gonna be like oh, dis disincluded from the rest of your class. We start having classes with each other first semester of freshman year and every other nursing class in the following semesters is all of us in one room. Since we are such a small program, I do get to go to class every week, usually um, without a pandemic in the same classroom with all 60 or so of us. And that's just a great way to get to know each other. You're together for four years and you're definitely gonna form study groups and you, know, you carpool together to clinical. So you make new friendships every single semester within um your class year so that's my one of my favorite parts about this program and what really drew me to UMass was the size of nursing because it kind of made it feel nice and accessible to other resources so. all right so I I'm I'm seeing a question about I know that nursing classes are all in one area of campus can you get dorming near Skinner yeah there are a variety of different areas for dorms. The, the dorms that are nearest to Skinner Hall are the ones in the Northeast section and also Sylvan and the new North section are fairly close. But um, the central section, which is up the hill is not excessively far away. Probably the furthest geographically is Southwest. Uh, that would be, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe about a 15 minute walk to Skinner Hall. But we also do have um, a PDTA bus system that comes around campus to to help students move from location A to location B. All right, and I also see a question that probably someone from, oh, I think someone had answered it centrally already because it moved over to the answer column. All right. All right, I believe, not seeing any more questions and seeing that it's 1039, I believe we're supposed to be uh, wrapping up about 1040. So thank you everyone for being here with us we're really grateful for your interest in the College of Nursing and we hope to see at least some of you soon. Thank you very much.